The Ashulet Rail Trail is a 21.2 mile long trail which winds along the Ashulet River between Keene and Hinsdale, New Hampshire. To begin in Keene, find the trailhead off of Emerald Street. Parking can be found across the street in the center at Keene parking lot. So from this parking area, you actually have a couple different options you can choose to do. Right behind me, if you wanted to go on a westward trail, is one of the sections of the Cheshire Rail Trail. In front of me, if you go eastward, you hook into the Industrial Heritage Trail, and then a little further down, you hook into the other section of the Cheshire Rail Trail. Or, you go south from here, which is the trail we'll be doing today, is the Ashlet Rail Trail. This trail begins as a paved pathway and leads next to some old industrial buildings and parts of Keene College. Soon you come to the first of four trestles crossing the Ashlet River. The trail then turns to dirt and leads out of Keene. It moves along in a fairly straight line before crossing Matthews Road several times. This trail does have quite a few road crossings, so as always, just be careful as you're hiking along and keep an eye and an ear out. Make sure there are no cars, like that one. You can also find some sort of parking next to most road crossings. After successfully crossing the road, continue along. As you get to the crossing near Dartmouth Road, Matthews Road, you may want to take a few moments and just head down the street a little bit. First of all, there's a huge parking lot here, but you see here crossing the Ashlet River is a sweet little covered bridge. As you continue along from Dartmouth and Matthews Roads, you'll soon come across the second bridge crossing this trail offers. After enjoying the peacefulness of the water rolling underneath, you continue along through the woods. This trail, like many long trails, follows very close to roads and goes through towns and has other roads cross over them. So if you're wanting to do just a section of them and you have somebody to sort of tag along with a car, you can always be dropped off at somewhere and then be picked up later. As the trail enters West Swansea, you'll cross at the intersection of Railroad Street and Pine Street. Here, you'll spot another parking area. As the trail continues through these small towns, it does cross pretty close to other people's property, so as always, just be courteous of the neighbors. As Christian Hill Road crosses overhead, you'll find an old bridge. This bridge here, I don't really know anything about it, how old it is or anything, but it's definitely old school railroad style. And there is, looks like a chicken up ahead. The trail continues next to Homestead Avenue before cutting into the woods and curving down towards Winchester. As you're heading along, going from Keene down towards Hinsdale, you will notice on your right that there is what looks like a racetrack. That is Monadnock Speedway, and if you happen to be walking by here on a Friday evening, I think around 6 p.m. or so, that's when they have races. So, if you like races, take a walk by. Of course, if you don't like races, you'll just want to keep moving. The trail continues onward and passes near some more houses right before you arrive at the third bridge crossing. Looking at the construction of these bridges, it's a little hard to believe that trains actually could cross them. Doesn't look like this. <laughs> they'd be able to hold that type of weight, but I guess then again, when this was first built, uh, trains were a lot lighter. After the third bridge, there's another road crossing, then the trail continues on. Arriving at Old Spofford Road, the trail crosses at a very sharp angle, rides the edge of Old Westport Road, where you can find a few more parking spaces, then crosses over again. Soon after, the old rail bed has been dug away somewhat. Three quarters of a mile from here, you'll enter the town of Winchester. You'll then enter the woods again and soon be upon the last bridge crossing. The Aries and I have arrived at the fourth and I believe final bridge crossing, uh, at least these wrought iron style bridge, that is. There may be a little one here and there, I just don't know. Uh, but that means that we're getting pretty close to the town of Ashlet. The trail follows close to the road and river before entering the town from which its name came. 
you see here, we are now entering the town of Ashulet. So this is a really cool spot for anyone who loves history because right there we have the Ashulet Covered Bridge. Behind us here we have the Ashulet Station House. And then right up the hill is the Sheridan House, which is also the Historical Society. After checking out the sites, it's time to move on. So along this trail, not only do you find some old ties here and there, an old spike perhaps, the old bridges, but rail cars indeed. In addition, every now and then you'll come across an old mile marker. As the trail moves on, it becomes elevated above the river and winds through the woods. When you spot the renovated station house and old red and blue cabooses, you'll know you've reached Depot Road in Hinsdale. Right after the station house, the trail enters a big bend. So after the big bend in the rail trail, you will look over to your right, and what is that? It's the Connecticut River. When you see signs of that, you know you're pretty close to the end. After following Route 119 for just about a mile, you'll come to the end of the trail. You'll also spot the last parking area. So at just about 21.2 miles long, with a fairly well-maintained surface, plenty of access points, and some cool historical spots along the way, the Ashulet Rail Trail can offer some great scenes, short little hikes if you want, or potentially practice for a marathon if that's what you're looking for. Just remember to have somebody at the other end to pick you up. Aries, did we call somebody?